My dear friends, there are two words repeatedly mentioned in the Gospel. And in our everyday language, we often use these two words interchangeably. Madalas natin gamitin, kaya hindi na natin namamalayan ang pagkakaiba ng dalawang salitang ito. Alam niyo po ba kung ano yung dalawang salitang iyon? Those two words are cure and heal. Curing and healing. In Jesus' ministry and, and in our spiritual lives, they hold distinct meanings. Curing refers to the physical act of removing a disease or an ailment. It is a technical medical term being used aimed at eradicating symptoms and restoring physical health. When Jesus cured the blind, the lame, and the lepers, He removed their physical afflictions, demonstrating His divine power. On the other hand, healing encompasses a more holistic restoration. It is not just physical healing. It is not merely the absence of disease or ailment, but the presence of wholeness, peace, emotional, psychological, and spiritual well-being. Healing compared to cure addresses the root causes of suffering with a spiritual, emotional, or spiritual. Kaya hindi po ba kapag mayroong pinagaling ating Panginoon, sinasabi niya, Your faith has healed you. Your sins are forgiven. Because this ministry is not just about curing our diseases, it is giving us healing, restoration of our well-being. It is a journey toward wholeness, reconciliation with God, with others, and with oneself. Hindi po ba kapag sinabi natin wholeness, holistic, holiness, buo, binubuo tayo ng Diyos. Wholeness is holiness. Some spiritual fathers would say. And so we say that Jesus' ministry was life-giving precisely because it, beyond, it, it went beyond curing. He sought to heal individuals in the deepest sense, offering them a new life, hope, and a restored relationship with God. And this affirmed what we have heard in the first reading. We heard that Jesus, God, did not create death. God does not rejoice in the destruction. Kung bakit may kamatayan, kung bakit mayroong pagdurusa, iyon ay dahil sa kasalanan. Iyon ay dahil sa maling paggamit na kalayaan na ibinigay ng Diyos sa atin. And in today's Gospel, we heard two healing miracles. The healing of the daughter of Jairus, who is gravely ill, and the healing of a woman who has been afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. Yung isa, 12 years old. Yung isa, 12 years na nagsasuffer. But we can see Jairus, the father of this sick child, Jairus mastered the strength to overcome his bias and beg the Lord for a miracle. Nagpakumbaba siya kahit na siya ang pinuno ng sinagoga. And then we also see the humility of this hemorrhagic woman who, who have mastered also the strength to break Jewish taboo and touch in faith 
the robe of Jesus and she was healed. Siguro po magandang ipagkumpara natin silang dalawa. Hindi po ba si Jairus mayaman, makapangyarihan? Itong babaeng ito, umahirap, walang kapangyarihan. Pero parehas sila pinagaling. Dahil parehas sila may pananalig. Parehas silang nagpakumbaba. Parehas silang hindi basta sumuko, nagsumikap. Perhaps God can listen to our prayers when we show humility, when we recognize our need for His intervention in our life. If we also persevere in faith, perhaps our prayers would be pleasing to the Lord. And we can also the way these two biblical characters pleaded the Lord. Hindi po ba si Jairus siya ay nikisumamo sa ating Panginoon para sa kanyang anak. He did not pray for himself. Siguro pa alala din po ito sa atin na minsan kapag tayo may mga mayroong mga problema hirap tayong makapagdasal, hindi po ba? Perhaps we should appreciate people praying for us when, when there are times that we cannot pray for ourselves, for our need. Kaya nga mahalaga pa rin na hinihingin natin yung pangapanalangin ng, ng mga banal, ng mga santo, hinihingin natin ang panalangin ng mahal na ina. And of course, we see also the personal prayer, the faith of this woman. Pinakinggan ng ating Panginoon yung kanyang pananampalataya. Dahil yung pananampalataya, yung kanyang mga pagsubok na pinagdaanan, hindi siya inalayo sa ating Panginoon. Yung kanyang pananampalataya, yun ang bigay ng lakas sa kanya para harapin ang kanyang pinagdadaanan. And hopefully, we have that kind of faith that gives us courage to face the difficulties in our life. My dear friends, Jesus came to save us. Because His ministry, His mission was life-giving. Kapag sinabi po natin, Jesus saves us, He saves, He is concerned not only with our soul, spiritual well-being, He is also concerned with our body and material well-being. And so when we say also, He loves us, He loves not just our souls, but also our body, our human flesh. That is why we celebrate the mystery of incarnation. Because God something good in our humanity. Sa ating pagkatao, hindi po ba? E nilikha niya naman tayong lahat ng mabuti. And so, God loves us, body and soul. And so it means that we, may, we have to make God visible in our lives, in different aspects of our lives. We proclaim the gospel in our home, in our workplace, in our community. So Jesus has to be visible in social, economic, political, and communal aspects of our life. Because God is concerned with our salvation, body and soul, spiritual and material. My dear friends, as followers of Christ, we are also called to be instrument of His healing power. This means that we must look beyond physical ailment and address the deeper wounds that people carry. Lahat tayo, lahat tayo mayroong mga pinagdadaanan. Lahat tayo may mga pagsubok na kinakaharap. Sana tayo din ay nagbibigay buhay katulad ng ating Panginoon. Sana hindi tayo nagiging dagdag pasanin parusa sa ating mga kasama. And so, remember the four letter of the word HEAL. Sana yung presensya natin nagbibigay ng hope. Sana yung presensya natin nagbibigay ng empathy, ng malasakit. Sana yung presensya natin may acceptance, may pagtanggap sa ating kapwa. At sana ang presensya din natin may love, may pagmamahal sa pag-ibig. 
may we give healing to one another when we show them hope, empathy, acceptance, and love. Sana hindi lamang laging mali ang nakikita natin. Sana napupuna din natin yung mabuting gawa ng ating kapwa para mas lalo natin silang maanyayang magpakabuti. In our communities, we must strive to create environments where true healing can occur. This involves listening, offering support, and encouraging one another to be good. It also means advocating for justice and peace, recognizing the dignity of all, particularly the marginalized and the outcast. Like Jesus, let us touch each other, not with the touch that hurts, punishes, destroys, and kills, but with the touch that cares, serves, creates, and gives life. So my dear friends, in this Eucharistic celebration, we continue that may God bless our desire and our longing for the fullness of life, not just for ourselves, but for everyone else. Amen.